Call the meeting to order and stand for the pledge. Good evening, welcome to the July 22nd, 2014 meeting of the Board of Trustees. Just a reminder for everybody sitting up here, a special request from uh, Fred to try to speak more directly into the microphone because of the uh, fans or the air conditioners in the back. So before we get to Joel, I just wanted to um, take a moment and note the passing of Jack O'Brien. Uh, he was a uh, retired state trooper, but you know he didn't work directly for the village, but he did serve 24 years as the town assessor or as a town assessor, uh, which uh, serves as the village's assessing authority. Um, so I just wanted to note that and thank, uh, recognize his many years of service here to the community. So with that, Joel. Thank you. If you want to take one pass. Um, so yeah, I, I want to note something as well. Usually I know you guys meet on the second Tuesday. I was here uh, for three hours until about midnight. No, I'm just kidding. A little bit of humor. Um, Is anybody else here? No. Oh. <laughs> thought I'd start out with some jokes. So like, when did you find out when the room played? I decided, no, sorry, all right. Enough joke. The, uh, I wanted to invite uh, you all and everybody here and in TV land. We're doing our second repair cafe. Uh, Gary Kenton over there is a big reason why the first one is a success, and I believe this one as well. Even Bruce Washburn and I got a bunch of tables recently transported over to, uh, from the high school to the town hall. And so if you have broken lamps, computers, bicycles, furniture, electrical appliances, clothing, uh, toasters, musical instruments, electrical items, bring them down to uh, Rhinebeck Town Hall just across the street uh, this Saturday, the 26th from noon to 4. We got a whole bunch of great folks who are going to fix them. Wonderful people like Bob Wyant and Bob Roush um, from the Town Highway Garage. And again, it's because of Gary and uh, Jess Scott, actually, of the Conservation Advisory Board for the town as well. Really, I mean, some of, some of the people are my friends, but a lot of it is, uh, is Gary and Jess's efforts. So I just thought I'd put that out there. It's repaircafe.org. We're doing our second one. A lot of people came out to the first one this Saturday, the 26th, noon to 4 p.m. Uh, and uh, yeah, the wheelabrator just took over running the Dutchess County incinerator. A lot of people like myself and Tom Mannix were hoping to sort of, instead of having a contract with another company to run the county incinerator, sort of phase out, you know, shut down the incinerator. That's not happening, but one little teeny tiny way, maybe we can move towards zero waste and increase recycling and composting and save stuff from the incinerator and the landfill is to have this repair cafe, so that's that. Um, also, Thursday, August 7th, at, I don't know when, it'll be like four o'clock, five o'clock, six o'clock. For about a decade, some people have been trying to kill or savagely weaken the item pricing law in Dutchess County. And um, I'm uh, maybe the biggest reason why we still have it in Dutchess County. You can go to the Stop and Shop on Route 9 here in Rhinebeck, you can go to any supermarket, and the law is, uh, there's supposed to be prices on each item and um, prices on, on all the items. And uh, so many times it's been put on the agenda and pulled. I know this may not be a big issue to a lot of you, but we're still in the worst recession we've been in for the last 70 or 80 years. UFCW has pointed out, Maine, uh, I'm sorry, Massachusetts, Michigan, all across the country, whenever these item pricing laws are repealed or weakened, the supermarket chains lay off workers. And I'm 50 years old. I cannot memorize the prices of the items. You know, they say, well, it should just be good enough to have the, um, you know, the scanners in the aisles, and then we're supposed to believe and trust that those aisle scanner prices are going to be the same at the front of the checkout. I don't always trust that. So it's a teeny tiny thing, but um, to me, it's a big thing. And so if you care about it one way or the other, uh, there's going to be a vote on it. There's probably at least going to be discussion on it. That's Thursday, August 7th. I just wanted to point that out. You probably saw front page articles in the Freeman and the Journal about thousands of people being shut off. And uh, you know, last time I checked, this is not a third world nation. This is a first world nation. So I've, I've worked with John Masurgeon at Central Hudson. 
over the last decade on a lot of different issues, sometimes closer than others, sometimes we butt heads. I've asked him to provide to me a list of, uh, you know, at least how many people, how many homeowners were shut off in the village of Rhinebeck, in the town of Rhinebeck, in Clinton. Uh, he has not been forthcoming with that list, so I hope to bring that to you because uh, I have a feeling it's not just uh, Dover or Beacon or Poughkeepsie. I have a feeling that may be happening right here in Northern Dutchess. Um, you don't usually see uh, Bill Larkin blazing a trail of environmental protection, but I just saw in the Poughkeepsie Journal, and this is an issue that um, eight of us, the Democratic Caucus, has been very strong on in February and March. weren't able to get anybody else to sign on to it, but this issue of the oil trains, many times each week, you know, the Poughkeepsie Journal's done a lot of work on this, John Farrell, and... Uh, John Penny right here in Rhinebeck, uh, it's a big issue. The oil trains, the oil barges coming up and down the river. Uh, as, as Bill Larkin, Republican state senator from across the river pointed out, Canada has banned the DOT 111 trains. Would not be a bad idea for us to do the same. Last year in Quebec, uh, 47 people died after a big accident. And uh, a lot of that crude oil, that back in uh, tar sands crude is, is coming up and down the river that it didn't, it didn't used to be like that, so I just thought I'd point that out. Um, the only thing I was going to say is uh, I voted yes to Owen Rafter, who's a good person, to be the planning commissioner for Dutchess County. I know that for the last 11 years I've served as county legislator. Many, many times John Clark and other people from the Dutchess County Planning Department have worked really closely with the village of Rhinebeck. I would just say I'm a little bit, I'm wondering why um, before the vote, before all 25 of us had a chance to vote on Owen Rafter being the planning commissioner for the county or not, he made a commitment that they were going to release a draft proposal for a solarized program in Dutchess County. Genesee County has it, Tompkins County, uh, Madison County, 75% cut in, in solar bills. So you take a five kilowatt residential solar system, <clears throat> usually costs 20 grand, take it down to five, to five grand. And then after I, I, I indicated I was going to vote after all 25 of us voted it. Uh, the announcement came down on high. No, the county's not going to do a solarized program. So I just want to point out to you, in Danby, in Calor and, and Caroline, and um, a number of places, it, it happens on a town level. And I know this may happen on the Northern Duchess Alliance, but um, I live in the town of Clinton, so far be it for me. I'm not trying to tell you what in the village of Rhinebeck to do, but I would love it if the village of Rhinebeck were to be the first municipality in Dutchess County to have a solarized program. And um, it's just bulk purchase of solar, just banding together neighbors. Just go to solarizemadison.com, solarizenewyork.org. That's it. Happy summer, everybody. I'm at 876-2488-453-2105. Bring your beloved but broken items to be fixed. Repair Cafe this Saturday, noon to 4, Town Hall. Thanks, Joel. We juggled the schedule a little bit here uh, tonight. We're going to go uh, to the Tree Commission uh, report. They put together a report for us. Um, basically, we were looking at a long-term plan of tree replacement in the village in terms of species and tree wells and sidewalk construction around them to um, improve the long-term survivability of the trees. And right now, we have a project uh, in front of M&T Bank, we have an accessible crosswalk going in, and after that's done, the property owner is going to be replacing the sidewalk in front of there. So we had asked for uh, a report from the Tree Commission in regards to, to the long-term plan, as well as specifically to the trees at that location, because of the concern that they may be um, damaged during the construction of the sidewalk. So we have couple members of the Tree Commission here tonight. Do you want to give us a sure. brief summary, Cecily? Um, so I hope everybody got the paper that says revised at the top because it has the correct numbers instead of the incorrect numbers. Um, so um, the locusts, which are our primary street tree in the core of the village, are uh, not very healthy. and. Uh, beginning to die, or certainly trending that way. So um, this opportunity came up to perhaps uh, take out one or two trees and replace them with something new to try them out. Um, so we chose what is called a Zelkova, 
um, to see a large group of, we have them around, we have planted them in the village, not this particular variety, but we have planted them. If you want to see a large group um, on Route 9, uh, south of Poughkeepsie in the median across from Coyote Cafe, those are, those are Zalcovas to see what they look like. Um, if we picked a particular uh, uh, variety which is called wireless because it's below the wires and would never need to be pruned by Central Hudson and therefore will stay looking very nice. Um, they are very wide though. And one of the problems that we have, not so much in front of the bank, uh, so, so this, paper, this report that we did was sort of two-parted two because what's in front of the uh, bank is a much bigger space, more space for trees there. In the rest of the village, in the core, there's very, very little space for trees. So what we would like to do is buy a product that's that was invented at Cornell University called CU, Cor Cornell University Structural Soil. And it's a special kind of material that leaves a lot of uh, particle space between the rocks and the gravel to allow the roots, the water, the oxygen to, to move around the tree and for the tree to move into that space so that it doesn't come up to the surface and lift the sidewalk. That's the primary reason the sidewalks crack and break is that the tree roots are looking for what they need to survive. If we give them this specialized soil, they will stay where they should. They will go down into it and get everything they need. Um, so it's a, it's a great idea. The only question is the cost. It is relatively expensive. But I think in the long run, it will save a lot of money. It will save re, redoing the sidewalks. It will save the tree itself living much longer life. These locusts here, I think, are about 25 years old. I don't know if anybody knows exactly about 25 years. And a locust should live, you know, three or 400 years. It's a very long live tree. There were trees along Mill Road that they took out when they put in the new part of the cemetery. Those were 300-year-old locusts. And they still would have gone on if they could have. So. Um, if we were to use this specialized soil, the trees would live much longer than they do now. It's a tremendous stress on a tree to live in the environment that they, they live in a little tiny hole with very little water and almost no oxygen. So um, this paper, this is a lot of the, you know, the, the really detailed explanation and some really good um, graphics that I got from Cornell University that you can see how it would work. Um, and pretty easy to see. The, these are the costs. Um, so we tried to follow the village code on the, the thickness of the sidewalk, but in, not at the bank. It's not necessary at the bank because they're leaving a relatively large strip of soil open, and that's great for a tree. Um, in the rest of the village, we would need to add um, some pervious, uh, porous, pavers for, to, to surround the tree into the sidewalk space. So I'm thinking that the sidewalk and the pervious paver would be right even. It just would, it would leave a little more room for water and for air to get down into the tree. So the cost of this uh, delivered is 60, well, not delivered, $60. Sixty-one sixty for a cubic yard, and at the bank, we would need 52 yards, and there's special calculations that I got from Cornell, and that would cost $3,200. The tree itself, if we got a big, uh, pretty established tree of a three-inch caliper, meaning the diameter of the tree would be th uh, three inches, about $200. Um, some of these figures are a little iffy because I thought probably somebody from, from the highway department might be able to plant the tree, but I put in $50 for planting the tree. And so we end up with um, the final cost for the, um, 
for that would be $3,503. That's the structural soil and the tree planted, all the things that all of those need, except for, and if you look at the picture on the back, um, there should be a kind of a drain that attaches to the storm drains in the village system. And I had no idea how to figure out what that would cost. But that's an additional cost to that $3,000. Um, and is then per, you have... Is per tree or is this for the five trees? It's pretty about? much per tree, but you could... I mean, they, once you were doing it, I think it would not be as much money. You know, it wouldn't be just a multiple per tree. It would be, as you did more and more trees, it would be less as time went on for different trees. But yes, each tree needs a drain, and each tree needs to be connected to, to the storm drain so that the water can, whatever water goes in, can also go out if necessary. Well, there are no storm drains in front of m and Bank. It's just a runoff. That's a runoff. There's no, no drains there. Where does the runoff go to? Uh, I mean, does it runs it... down Route 9. It's down okay. into the, into the uh, advancement kill. Un surface. Under the ground? On no, the surface. No, surface? On the surface. Yeah. Okay. So I'd have to do more research. I mean, I had to do this in kind of a hurry. So there were questions I had that I didn't have time to check. But I, I actually would write to the professor that designed this system and ask her about it. And I would have to find out for sure. And this would be outlining the perfect scenario. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. in every situation, we probably wouldn't be able to include all of the factors. Yeah, this is, you know, the absolute perfection of how you would do this according to them. But I think that certainly she recognizes that municipalities aren't able to do all of, all of these detailed things. Um, but then if you added the, um, the cost of the sidewalk, which again was an estimation, the total cost for two trees, which is what I think we would eventually see in front of the bank, it would be 10,282. And then three trees, which is a possibility, is 13,700 for three trees. I thought, I thought there were five trees that were coming down. There are five trees coming out, but there's a lot of stuff going on in front of the bank. There's, um, they have their own trees behind the sidewalk. They also have two um, utility poles. And I think there's something else. So Meg thinks that you would not have um, as many trees as they do now. We also have these trees with a 36-foot canopy, so they would fill mm -hmm. a quite a large space. So two trees uh, on the north and one tree on the south, or one on the north and one on the south, divided by the driveway. That's Any questions that I can well, answer? Well, now that I think of it, there are no storm drains in the downtown area on all the streets. Okay. They start right. like a Garden Street, what there's one there. And um, going towards Gigi's, I think that's the first one over there. Yeah. You got a map downstairs in Pat's yeah. office okay. where, where all the storm right. drains are. Right, okay. So it'd be important to find out if we really do need yes. a drainage system underneath these. I think it's it's a concern just thinking about it quickly. Um, when it, when we have these tremendous storms when it rains eight inches in a day it might be a problem. Uh, traditionally, I would say it wouldn't really be a problem, but if, if it's a sort of contained space and you get it eight inches down there and then again the next week you get five inches, where will that go? Well, but you, you don't want to have the roots sitting in water. Right, exactly. Yeah. And we have in many places pretty good soil here. Very sandy soil, so right. I don't it know if drainage would drain is. Off. A, yeah, I don't know if drainage is such a, a big deal, yeah. except for some special locations. Here. Yeah. yeah, the plan was to have um, this the CU soil be three feet deep, and normally tree tree roots stay in the top 18 inches. They don't prefer to go way down, so I think I think it would be okay. But, but I just would that like we to have check. Here, they the, the, the roots grow up. People start wanting to plant well, something that's on there, and the roots come up higher. That's because they're looking for 
uh, the water and the oxygen that they can't get in the space. I look, I, I just happened to glance out of the car today and in front of um, near Foster's, there was a tree, you know, a probably six inch caliper tree in a space that is basically seven inches wide. I mean, trees can't live like that. <laughs> Uh, and they and they're proving it because they're they're just going to give out pretty soon. So um, this just gives trees much more of what they need to be healthy and happy and grow and be pretty. So what are we going to do in front of the M T Bank? So we would suggest that we have a um, five by ten inch of foot tree pit and use this uh, soil, it would be pretty much in concert with the M&T Bank whether they would like to put pervious <clears throat> pavers in there to just sort of fill the space or they could put um, what they have now, which is daylilies, that would be fine. People could plant ground cover. Um, and, and it would look very similar to what, you know, what it looks like now. The difference is all underground. The difference is this product that would be under the ground. So it wouldn't really be different looking. Hopefully the trees would look healthier. That's how it would be, you know, different. Well, my question is, this has been before the planning board, and the planning board approved a certain plan already? Yeah. Yes, there, there are two issues. We'll, I guess we'll talk about the, the specific case at M&T first. And yes, the planning board has approved the project. So. Our intention is not to overrule the planning board and, and require that he use the structural soil, but maybe suggest or recommend or request that that be used. And also, um, you know, we probably, if we're going to adopt the recommendation of the tree commission, we would request a meeting with the property owner and go over the findings. I mean, they already have just the design by its by its nature has a favorable. Um, tree pit design mm -hmm. that would meet the specifications and uh, the big question is do we remove the trees and start fresh with uh, the preferred species because these may get damaged you know it seems you know that the sidewalk is buckled from the roots so obviously those roots have to be removed to put the new sidewalk in so we may um, end up if we try to save them you end up with dead trees and now you got to tear everything up again in a, right. in a couple of years. Um, so that's that's the first question, but in terms of the expense, I believe uh, we would have to talk about that. Um, but it's uh, they've already planned to, to build the sidewalk. The trees would most likely be our responsibility. The, I, but I just want to say that the structural soil uh, is, is intended to be built upon. You can actually put roads and um, yeah. structures on top of it, so it um, fits the in the law, there's some kind of characterization of having, I don't remember the exact words, but some kind of structural, strong structure under the sidewalk. And this, I believe, would fit that characterization. Um, and the top is just concrete. It's the very same kind of sidewalk that you would build anywhere. Um, it's just that you put this underneath instead of regular gravel or regular structural stuff. I seem to remember that John Clark wanted to just take out a few trees, right? Right. right. Um, and, and we're certainly uh, amenable to that. Um, it's our position that once they're taken up, we, uh, we'll see how, what they look like for sure. And taking them up, we think, will damage them so much that, in fact, we have to we'll take, take them out. Take but, all of them out. But you can't tell. You, uh, you don't know. And that's, I think, John's point. Mm -hmm. you, you don't know until you look. And that's true. So we would. They, they would dig up these trees, we would come over and see how much did you have, how many roots did you have to take out to get that sidewalk up, and, uh, and then we would know. The reason for the okay. drains is because um, this material is very granular, and so surface water will immediately drop through it and go right down. So in the case where the base is not sand or doesn't drain quickly, it could be clay, yeah. that hole could fill up with water and could the right. roots could be sitting in water. So I think this is probably just a general <coughs> yes. yeah. detail. Mm -hmm. And I think depending on the soil, the native soil materials, it, it could change from, from place to place. Up through the tree, yeah. 
another thing too is that this this soil doesn't necessarily support a lot of other types of vegetation because it's very rocky. It 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 virtually is gravel with some sort of organic matter in it and it supports trees. But hmm. my previous experience is there's a lot of other small uh, annuals and perennials that won't live in it because it does drain so quickly and it is very rocky. So it might be good for trees, but maybe not for lots of right. other. But it goes under the sidewalk and not in the tree pit, correct? No, it goes in the tree pit too. Well, you, it, it depends. If it's a large tree pit, like the one that, that we are looking at for the M&T, we would use regular soil right around the tree. Mm -hmm. um, and so you could plant things. In the core of the village where the tree pits are so small and there's really not room enough to make them very much bigger, then yeah, you would be, you would be using the structural soil. Uh, right around the tree and underneath the tree as well. But in this particular case, it, it mm -hmm. would be pretty much just the way it looks now, with regular <coughs> soil. But that's a good point. It's, you can't grow. Maybe you could grow cactuses. Or yeah, there's, a, there's <laughs> lots of things that do <laughs> grow in it, but I just know yeah. that there's something. Yeah, that, no, that I'm don't. sure it's true. So the idea for the for the bigger picture would be to have some kind of, you know, preset list of recommendations that when it came time to replace you know, a tree or a section of sidewalk someplace else, we weren't starting over with the process and we could right. say, well, we have a plan here. And this is ideally what we would like to see put in there. It could help the planning board um, and help us when we have to make a decision. So, um, again, it's two separate issues. Uh, so I'll make a motion to accept the, uh, or that we adopt the position or the recommendations of Tree Commission as it applies to the to the future um, construction and planting. Second. Discussion. Will we will it uh, are we accepting it as it is here or will we write more specifics to how it will apply in different? Well, I think we'll accept it as it is here because that's all we have. But we can continue to to uh, define it further. And then <coughs> does it does it get Accepting it today, does it get added to our planning code or our uh, general code? Or I mean, Rich can answer that, but I don't think it would go into. Yeah, I don't think it, it's a code adjustment now. It's just so this would be acceptance what we would recommend. This is like our general recommendation. So when, how do we it enforce comes. it? Is it just a general recommendation? Yeah, it seems it's quite expensive. It's three times the cost of regular soil. Well. Uh, Yes, but I think it's even more than that because what we are using now is just some mulch, right? How even you plant trees? Well, we use the soil that's already there. Yeah, it's already they, there, right? Yeah. These are typically in in people's yards. These aren't planted in the middle of sidewalks like the yeah. ones we're talking oh, about. Oh, you mean on the main thoroughfare? Yeah, we're talking about maybe a tree has to be removed out here. What do you do? How do you replace it? You only have a couple of feet. What what is the plan? Do you cut some of the sidewalk out and make a bigger trough? Well, you would go to, you know, the this previous. Is, yeah. Sorry, this is just for the downtown area. It's not for like when we do tree plantings in the fall. Or okay. Correct. It's for planting in the yeah. in places in, where in it's the business sur area. Where it's surrounded yeah. by concrete, or, concrete. Okay. or other impermeable yeah. surface. So I think that should be specified somewhere, so people don't come and say they, they want to have it everywhere, because that can be. Quite expensive if we do if we do that. Yeah, well, there, there'd be no reason to put structural soil in your front yard. Yeah. And so. also, we the responsibility for the sidewalks is on the property owner. Correct. Right. So in, in some ways, we're shifting a cost. I mean, as as Cicely said, we're going to save money in the long run because we're going to prevent these roots from coming up and buck into sidewalks, prevent accidents, and so on. But we are sort of shifting the expense. To the, to the village. Where the village is going yeah. to adopt a little more expense of getting in the right tree and getting it in the right way and avoiding problems with the sidewalk, saving the uh, property owners some money. No, but when, when, we, um, when there's a problem with a tree root wrecking somebody's sidewalk, we are responsible. Oh, we are. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. Just for that part. Okay. Right. Yeah. And, and the other thing I want to note is okay. you're not saying that we're going to use the same tree all throughout the village, right? Um, no. Well, no, not, no, not throughout the village. Perhaps in the core. Um, I, oh, okay. Because in the past, I. But I'd like 
like to see at least a variety of alcobas and perhaps a variety of, of other trees, but I, I don't think that's a decision that just from the tree commission. But we can take recommendations or choose, you know, here's four trees, choose the one that you like or, you know, have certain features, but. Yeah, the village, or the, we approve the trees that are in the, in the right of way anyway, and usually we rely on the tree commission, so they would still be looking at it on a site-by-site -site basis, but it's more a, you know, guideline for preferred construction practices. Pat, right. what, Can we amend it, amend the motion yeah. bridge to apply only to, uh, you know, I don't system. think you have to do anything, because the code basically okay. says that the tree commission is going to make recommendations for the removal care maintenance of various trees. I mean, that's basically what they're doing. They're giving this to you and for any future actions. Okay. You've got this in your your records. Well, but they're also specifying the kind of soil that they're using. I think that's what we're well, talking again, about. That's, that's their recommendation. Yes. So what happens if uh, they go through the planning process and they reject any recommendations? What do we have in place to be able to enforce that? In the development process? Well, if someone wants, doesn't want to use a structural soil and they want to well, it's going to be with the planning board, and it's uh, yeah. of course these are in the, the village right of way, isn't it? Yes. This isn't on the applicant's property, as I understand it. But the sidewalk is. Correct. No. And that's going to have to be in conjunction with the planning board going through the yeah. review. So again, I mean, this is what the tree okay. commission is giving you is in accordance with the code. They're giving you recommendations right. on okay. the maintenance, the planning, and the, the various trees in the village. David, isn't there very specific um, information on the construction of sidewalks in the code? Yeah, it, it, it says um, it says uh, in the code that it's recommended for sidewalks four inches of concrete and four inches of either marble chips or an other approved substrate. And then if, if cars are going to go over it, which in this case they will be on the driveways, um, I think it's not a couple of inches of concrete and substrate, mm -hmm. but approved substrate. Okay. <laughs> because it's going to go, um, it's going to be narrower. The sidewalk is very large in front of the, um, the bank and the adjacent office building now. We didn't feel it needed to be that big. So the pit will go from three to five feet, line up with the post office and the Beekman Arms. Mm -hmm. And the sidewalks will go across the three driveways. There'll be one strip of concrete defining a sidewalk from the post office down to the uh, barbecue restaurant. And I think the big one arms has also been talking about possibly replacing their sidewalk. And again, the asphalt is, you know, undulates like a wave because of the tree roots. And I think they would be interested also in some way they were going to put down bluestone or something of having a way that, that would not be pushing those plates up again and possibly those honey locust trees being replaced. I know you'd like to phase them in. I know John had said he wanted to phase them in, but if they're going to be killed by the digging to put the new sidewalks in, then we just, you know, bite the bullet. And for a couple of years, we'll have some small trees that will eventually get larger. And, but, but that's a different area than Market Street, which is, you know, the trees are encased in concrete. I mean, to, from Samuel's to the uh, cigar store, they're virtually mostly dead, the whole south side of the street. And there's no room at all. I don't know how you get them out of there. So you'd have to, like, figure a way to do it. And I've seen Hudson has done it with a brick strip going along the curb. Port Ewan just renovated their sidewalks a couple of years ago. They put in the brick strips with the trees so they can get some you know, water in there. So there could be compromises. Maybe it doesn't have to be three feet of structural soil. It could be a foot of structural <coughs> soil to compromise on the cost, but give the tree and the sidewalk a better chance for a longer life. So it, you know, it's just recommendations, and we'll have to, on a case-by-case -case basis, look at it when it comes before the planning board. So maybe okay. the so maybe the, the move here is to to make this uh, sub base material a, a, an approved sub base material, so that then there everything refers back to what we're approving tonight. Right. So make this a, an approved right. material in uh, tree situations, I guess. And the mayor and I just talked that we would get the zoning enforcement officer. We could meet with. Mr. Acevedo and see what compromise we could come up with. Because we did not talk about trees, we just talked about widening the tree pit, making the sidewalk a more standard sized sidewalk, and trees were not mentioned. And he said, we'll just leave the trees. But clearly, the Tree Commission said it's going to, you're going to kill them. So it, it, the point is moved at this juncture. Okay. 
So we can retract the, the motion on the general concept. Now can we do make a recommendation based on the tree commission for the removal of the trees at the like we would normally do? I mean, again, in connection with the development, the tree commission is consulted by the right. planning board. And these are their recommendations, and that's going to have to be taken into consideration when they go through the development process. So, so, so assume, typically, I'm assuming some engineers also looked at this to make yeah. sure that this material is actually. But typically, the, it, the tree are. commission brings recommendations to the village board mm -hmm. for removal of trees. Right, and, and, you, and you can accept the report from the tree commission. But in the future, the tree commission should somehow get a hold of the planning board. I don't know. Do you know anybody on the planning board? <laughs> <laughs> but, but this is a little bit. This is a little bit different in that we we changing the sidewalks as well and and the trees. It is not just a tree, you know, oh, right, tree right, removal right. And, uh, right. and and putting a new one in there. So we have really a whole system that we that we're trying to change. So it's somewhat different. Well, I think it makes sense to take the trees out now and put new ones in. I, I think so. No sense. When you, when you look at the, when you look at these trees, I mean they have yeah. welts all over the yeah. place on the bottom. Plus they're not very nice looking anymore. They're like no. broken up. So. Spindly. <clears throat> so is it fair to say, without a motion, that the village board is in consensus with the tree commission in removing the trees and starting fresh with the preferred species? Yes. 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 Uh, yes. 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 Aye. Yes. Okay. Fair enough. Moving along. Wastewater. Wastewater. Okay. Getting the first um, treated uh, 3.84 million gallons uh, in June. Processed 42,806 gallons of sludge, and processed um, 4,053 4, uh, pounds of sludge in month of June and um, there are a couple of other items uh, from wastewater one is the um, the Ford truck that uh, Rugi's uh, determined was no longer a workable so um, I wanted to make a motion uh, Anthony uh, Gasparini got an estimate for what he could get for it for the truck for scrap but uh, he didn't think we'd be able to sell it, but I wanted to make a motion that we would uh, empower Anthony to sell it as is or sell for scrap. To put it out to bed, you mean? Yeah. You're declaring it surplus and putting it out, right? Right. Mm -hmm. no. I'll second it. Discussion. Yeah, we have made a decision that we can't fix it. So Correct. So somebody it's can use it here. Uh, yeah, we, we've it. looked into that. Um, it's been looked at by Rugi's and also the uh, mechanic at the street department. Yeah, it's not, but not someone else may decide it's cost effective. Right, <laughs> and it also has it does have a plow, an eight-foot plow. Right. So, can we bid that separate or both? The plow, I think, is serviceable. Yeah, yeah, because someone yeah. may not want the truck, and they may yeah, they may, sure. Put them out to bid separately. He got an estimate for the. Uh, Plow for scrap. Also, if we decide that okay. we don't need. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, also, um, there were a couple of years ago, um, Trustee Nunicker and, um, and and Anthony Gasparini had identified a number of things that needed replacement, and now. Um, We've got a proposal from Griffin Pump Service to um, replace the Astor Home Lift Station pump. And um, this is the sort of last item on the list that uh, you know, sort of to do that uh, we've been going through. Anthony feels like if the pump were to fail, it would be very costly. You pay incredible daily uh, emergency fees. Um, the panel that goes along with it is, uh, I think he said, 32 years old. And um, 
the estimate he got for the um, the proposal from Griffin is for eighteen thousand five hundred to replace the uh, the pump. Have you gone through the procurement policy? We'll get that out to bid as well. Right. Well, you have to get more estimates. You have to get at least three, I believe. Okay. I'm looking into this memo to see if. Um, if I recall, I think there was at the time that they, they priced that, I think there was multiple bids. I think since they're old, they have to go back up. Okay. I think that's how they came up with that number. So we can have them get that for us for next month. Okay. Is that all you got for wastewater? Yep. Heinz, water? We uh, treated 12,719,000 gallons of water this, uh, this month, in the month of June. Uh, we also fixed a, a leak to the basement, and I sent you what this looked like here. Each one got a copy of it. And the guys did it all by themselves. We had to dig about 75, 75 foot long trench, about three feet deep. Uh, had water coming into the uh, the side of the building every time we had heavy rain, and we had just painted it downstairs. So we we fi they fixed it and did a beautiful job. And I want to really recommend the water boys on this one here. Uh, is it seven? All four of them. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so I just want they put a pipe underneath this crushed stone. And yeah, well, what what was there was a pipe, a crushed pipe. Oh. And what they did now, if you look through the through the pictures, is they oh, yeah, uh, I see it uh, they they put a uh, an angle uh, uh, an angle uh, water re uh, repellent in there on, on the corners, and uh, first first they they, they put uh, tar in there, they tar and then they put an angle water repellent in there uh, to seal this thing off, and then they put in plastic. And then they put a pipe in, and then on top of the pipe, uh, they put uh, gravel and then filled it back up again. And uh, the, the thing, it works like a charm. I, I, even, I even got a shirt out of it. Good job. Is that uh, the one you're wearing tonight? Uh, yeah, the one I'm wearing Very tonight. nice. Yeah. Um, we received bits to improve the pump control station, and uh, the three <coughs> We got three bits, and uh, the lowest bit was $62,850. Uh, they ranged from, from that $62,850 to $84,000. And I want to make a motion uh, to accept that bit and uh, go out uh, for construction, send a letter out that we uh, want to build this. Uh, the village engineer uh, uh, supports that. And uh, so... Uh, I'd like to get a second to second. go out uh, for, for uh, discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 As far as the water distribution system is concerned, we uh, repaired an 8-inch water main break in uh, Rhinecliff, uh, Valley Way Road. We, re we replaced uh, the third uh, broken hydrant at, at 4 Morton Road in Rhinecliff. We also replaced in, this, uh, in the same vicinity a, uh, a four-inch water valve that, fed, that feeds uh, Howland Avenue from Morton Road. So we did a lot of work in, in, in Rhinecliff in the last uh, couple of weeks. We're going to do another one uh, this coming week or this month on uh, Grinnell Avenue <clears throat> where there was an, uh, also a broken hydrant. All of the broken hydrants there were of the uh, vintage 1895 variety. <clears throat> And that doesn't mean they were made in there, but it's a patent. Uh, but the company went out of business in 1940. And so since then, there's no more around. I've been trying to sell these as, uh, as antiques. Mm -hmm. uh, we uh, replaced a broken service line on uh, at Montgomery Street, and that was on the July 4th weekend. We had water coming out there, so I had to get uh, people to, 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 mo to mobilize there. And uh, we found right next to the, uh, the ser was a service line that broke because service line was right next to the fire hydrants. We first thought it was the hydrant. But it was also one of these old hydrants that needed to be replaced. So we, we replaced both the service line, which the customer pays for, <coughs> and the uh, hydrant with which we, uh, that we are paying for. And we use uh, uh, the help from the street department, Howie. 
Sure. Uh, I had, uh, I've, I've been doing mapping of the, of the water system. I, I finished the, uh, the village and we are now concentrating on uh, the uh, water system in Rhinecliff. And uh, what we're doing is, we tr first of all, you know, easy thing is to seize the hydrants, but we, we can't find them many times are the, the shadow valves, and that we are doing that right now. Well, we, want, we found one of the shadow valves that feeds the, uh, uh, the main 16-inch trunk line that comes from the water plant and, and pushes water up to Highly Road uh, on a piece of property uh, on Wall Street, <coughs> which is uh, one of the side streets, the first side streets, as you go into Rhinecliff uh, on Rhinecliff Road, it's right next to the Star Library, that, that property. And it turned out <clears throat> that the person had put a tree built uh, years ago, a tree right on top of the valve, and uh, two more on top of the, uh, uh, the trunk line. So I went to see the gentleman, and they were very nice about it. And uh, within a few days, they moved all the trees and re they replaced them uh, there. Uh, we had a problem on Violet Hill Road, on Violet Hill uh, Reservoir, we uh, had to replace a, uh, a pump, one of the number two pumps. Uh, what we, the reason we need the pumps up on Violet Hill Road is because the reservoir is obviously high, so are the number of houses, maybe six or seven, in, in the same neighborhood, and uh, there's no pressure exerted there, so we have to actually pump you know, uh, uh, put, uh, have a pump there to, 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 uh, to create pressure on there. Uh, that is as far as the, the water, uh, uh, water department is concerned. I do have, uh, I periodically uh, uh, report on the power uh, reduction uh, initiatives that we have, and I think I gave you all a, a copy of, uh, of this here and see how we did in, in June. Um, we uh, generated uh, 3,338 kilowatt hours. Uh, we used 4,792 kilowatt hours at a net saving of about $534 uh, based on 16, uh, 16 uh, cents per kilowatt hour. Uh, one other thing that is, uh, has come up, and I got it through Anthony Gasparini actually. There is a company called ECS, and that's called Energy Curtailment uh, Specialists. And what they do is they uh, uh, work with the big power companies and see how they can cut down some of the power users in turn when we have a brownout or something like that. And uh, they go to big users and see what kind of uh, generating capacity they have. And it turns out that uh, they did the village, uh, you know, the, what we have here in, in, the, in the building and also in the, in the wastewater department and so on, and in the water department. And it turns out that the only one that qualifies because of the size is the one in the water department. And uh, what they had told us, uh, they, uh, uh, and, uh, so, so a, a month ago or two months ago, I came to the board and asked them for permission so they could go out uh, to the to the comp to the uh, Central Hudson and, and uh, do an investigation, see how much what our peak uh, power consumptions are, and they came back. And the net of it is that we can we get a uh, about a twenty-six hundred dollar uh, a payment every year, uh, uh, split between summer and and winter payments, uh, to uh, to to go on uh, to use our our. Uh, generators uh, to, to provide power for ourselves if indeed there is a brownout condition and so on. So that's just like found money, $2,600 and, and 30, what was it? Yeah, 2650 a year. On top of it, they're paying us 40 cents a, uh, an hour uh, of, of usage uh, for uh, uh, the, the, the fuel that we are using. And it turns out uh, we would use about 30 cents of fuel, they're paying us 40, so there's a small sa savings there. But anyway, so what I need to do is I need somebody to sign it. I probably could sign it, but I think I want the mayor to sign this here. And uh, then Pat will uh, forward this to, uh, to the company. A few guys, so I don't think we need it. Do we need a, a motion to do that? Yeah, I've never seen it. I don't even know. You what haven't this seen is. it. Let's let Rich review it and we'll okay. 
Well, if, if you review, just give it back to Pat. Okay? And, uh, Is that all you got, Heinz? Um, uh, yes, for now. Okay, so mm -hmm. on to the fire department. We'll start with Scott. Okay. Uh, the monthly call volume for the month of June uh, was 16 EMS calls to the town and 32 to the village for a total of 48. Uh, eight fire calls to the town and eight to the village for a total of 16. And one of those includes that big fire we had out at uh, Everetti. Uh, There's 200,000 gallons of water in the water department. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. And, Thank um, you. <laughs> and um, uh, motor vehicle accidents, there was five calls to the town and, and two to the village for a total of seven. So the fire department responded to a total of 29 calls uh, to the town, 42 to the village for a total of 71 calls for the month of June. Um, I also have three applications for, for new members for the fire department. Uh, they've been er, recommended by Vice President Ken Scattergood. They are Ryan Hall, Andrew Fraley, and Jeffrey Cotter. And I'd like to make a motion that we accept these applications. Second. As recommended by the Ken Scattergood. Second. They're all uh, probationary firefighters, that's what they're? They would, um, so. yes they would. All, right. all three as probationary firefighters. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Welcome, Jeffrey. Mm -hmm. um, so from there on the fire department, I have an update on the contract negotiation. Um, if you've been following it all, it's been going on for quite some time. I think it started last, um, last October. And uh, last month on the, the 27th, I met with the supervisor, Elizabeth Spinzia, who is here with us tonight, and Henry Campbell, the uh, emergency management coordinator for both the village and the town. Um, and I put forth kind of a different plan than we were working on, which would call for a five-year plan. I think it's been outlined uh, from at a town board meeting already that would start at 160,000 and increase 10,000 a year to 200,000. Um, and the benefits that, that I saw were, you know, it would allow a gradual increase for the town so to lessen their impact, it would secure the funding for continued operations in, in the village. Um, it would protect the role of our volunteer firefighters and ultimately would provide for uninterrupted and guaranteed service to the residents of the town protective district as well um, as the village. And uh, so, the terms, like I said, are for five years, which start January 1st of 2014, would go through December 31st of 2018. Um, the terms would be identical to what they've been in the past with the exception of a, of a 90 day cancellation uh, clause notice. And you guys should have, or should have seen a copy of it, but it's basically the same as the, as the past. Um, so I'd like to make a motion to enter into this agreement with the town. Second. Discussion. Uh, is it incrementally $8,000 a year for five years? Is that the way? 10,000. 10,000. Yeah. So it starts at 160, ends at 200 in 2018. Were there any other conditions set to this or is... Well, we're trying to do the math here. That's what I'm trying to. It goes to two. That would be two hundred and ten thousand after five years. No, it starts at one hundred sixty, one hundred seventy, one hundred eighty, one hundred ninety, two hundred. Starts in fifteen. No, it starts, it starts now. January first of two thousand fourteen. Oh, okay. So the the time that's already passed. I see. So the no, there are no other conditions in that would be in the contract, uh, but once we. Um, once we approve the contract, then we would talk about another plan, uh, the rest of the concept moving forward. So right now on the table is, is the contract. Any more discussion on that? Well, we're also going to have somebody from the town be a liaison. Is that 
contingent? We yeah, we've so, offered. No, okay. it's not not contingent, but oh. we've offered to the town for them to um, assign a liaison to the to the fire department that would be you know would have access to all the same information that that we do. We seems like. We want to do that. Yeah, we should. Yeah, I mean, we have to. We, we, at the very least, that that should be part of the contract. Otherwise, the, the trust factor can't uh, be maintained. <laughs> we want we want the town to be fully informed on what's going right. on. So, would there be a requirement for somebody to uh, attend the? The bud our budget meetings, or you're, you're setting you're setting the budget, you're setting the dollar rate right now for the five years going right. forward. Right. So, so but I think they want visibility of what they're spending it on. I thought that's what well, the, the contract simply calls for them to make an annual payment based right. upon these and numbers. We, and we've invited yeah. them to come to the table. Well, they're agreeing to the amount, so yeah. it would be in their best interest to attend. And either party has the ability uh, within 90 days of the end of the year to opt out. So we're just talking about executing the contract, and then we will have a, a bigger discussion on, on, you know, plans moving forward from there. Yeah. So all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So um, obviously we we have to wait for the town to. I know they preliminarily approved it, but they would still have to sign the contract. But I will sign it. Um, tonight and I have a copy here for Elizabeth but uh, in the in the co further concept moving forward um, and I don't want to speak for Elizabeth but I know or the town but I know the town wants to they want to get out of the fire business and which would create districts and the, the plan now we have uh, the village fire department hillside fire department and Rhinecliff fire department um, and each of those departments us being the village and them actually being districts, each has a portion of the town protective district assigned to it. So in the in the plan um, or discussion moving forward, Hillside would 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 take on their portion of the protective district. Radcliffe would take on their portion of the protective district, and then uh, there would potentially be a new district that would include the village and the town protective part. And if that were to happen, then this. Would be a uh, it would be a, a district with its own uh, board of elected board of commissioners to run. So, and the idea is to put the negotiations behind us and move forward, and then would allow time to to uh, address all the other options, which would include, a, you know, there's been talk of the ambulance district, there's been talk of a big townwide district, but this would just set. The, you know, we have secured services for everyone involved, and it would allow us to focus not on negotiations anymore, but on the path path forward. Do you want to Elizabeth? say something? Yes. Good evening. Uh, thanks, Heath. That's uh, well said. Um, I feel like a broken record, but most important for us is to ensure that each of the three departments in the town are viable and healthy, both financially and that the members are supported, because we realize that we need these three departments and they need each other to survive. The mutual aid is paramount. Um, we wanted to um, accept this compromise offer, but of paramount importance to us is this new district. We don't want to be in a position of having our town residents not represented by people who they not be, we want them to be represented by people they elect. So the only representation they have with regard to this contract is us, and we only have very limited power. We have negotiating power with you. So we'd like to see this turned over to a board of elected commissioners. And um, that will let it be self-governing. It will let everybody in the district have their representation. And it will also create one rate. Um, and we will, we've asked Rhinecliff and Hillside, as he said, to take on their portions. So we're hoping that this might also open the door in the future when the departments are ready to look towards one department for the whole town, which in our opinion is, while it's not in our control, we, we know it's 
a great option for all the residents of Rhinebeck. One fire department um, with one rate, you know, with three houses. So that's what, what we're looking for. And we would start the move to consolidate. We would hope that you would too uh, consolidate this department um, immediately so that we're out of this uh, conundrum by early next year. So I guess I'm looking for, you know, some, uh, Heath and I have talked, Heinz and I have talked, I really haven't talked to the board as a whole, um, but I guess we're looking for some kind of, um, you know, agreement that this is, you know, that you're in favor of this as well. But thank but, you. But you heard the motion that was made and how we how it was structured. Do you think that can uh, be agreeable to your board? We've 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 agreed in it uh, at our last meeting, so we're waiting for it. But you know, with the understanding that we start immediately on consolidating the the district that uh, or creating a new district of the village and their portion of the town's fire protection district. So I guess I'm looking to poll you guys uh, to to find out that you support that. Thank you. Thanks, Elizabeth. agenda along. Mm. Howie Street Department? Okay. Well, I just I didn't know if we wanted to. Yeah, I didn't know if we were finished with this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. just, just okay. to. Just oh, if you. Yeah, well, I kind of yeah. asked a question. Um, if well, okay. you well could. this, is, this well. is a new, in other words, the idea of consolidation. I hadn't heard any details put on that until this evening. So for myself, all I can say is that uh, I think it's a really good idea. I don't know if your timeline is feasible, like to get it. My guess I can is give the board an outline for its next meeting, so at least you understand the concept. Yeah, right. So, yeah, I mean philosophically, you know. You and we don't have all the details right. put together, and that's kind of why we wanted to. Yeah, you know, neither. Stop, yeah. Yeah, move beyond. The previous details of this right. call and that call, and you know, get the contract established so we could move forward and, and talk right. about the bigger picture. Right. So, and Rich has agreed to outline it for us, and so we'll have something to to work on. So we don't know exactly whose responsibility and how we, at the moment, how it would go about. What has to be created, what has to be dissolved, but that would all all come out in the near future, and we would involve uh, the public, which would take. Um, some time, you know, to, to seek input from, from our residents as well as those in the protective districts. Thank you. We're glad this is behind us and we'll move forward together. So thank you, gentlemen. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, Highway Department. <clears throat> Drainage work was done on Rockefeller uh, Avenue, uh, Rockefeller Lane. Um, this is an area that constantly floods out. Um, during uh, rainstorms, and we don't even, even have to have a lot of rain, but it's always flooding down there. And the reason why we did this, actually the highway department did the drainage work themselves. Uh, we, we, we might be paving uh, Rockefeller, depending on the bid that we get. We are gonna move forward with Asher. Asher goes over to Rockefeller, and we might continue all the way up, depending on what the bids are. So we wanted to be prepared with the drainage work before we did that. Do we have that prepared, how we go out to bid? I thought that uh, it was going out the bid, yeah. Pat? Do we publish that bid? Set, no, I haven't published it yet. Oh. No, because it had to be approved to go out the bid. You want to do that? Okay. I'd like to make a motion that we um, put out the bid. There's two separate bids, right, Pat? Yeah, it was for Rockefeller and... Well, Asher Road. Pat. Yeah, Asher Road and Rockefeller. Yeah. Asher Road going from Route 9 over to Rockefeller Lane as one bid, and then continuing a second bid to go from Asher Road, Rockefeller up to um, Crowell. Crowell. Is it going to go to Route 9 the other way? I don't believe so. No, I, I think, think that's so. okay. That portion of Rockefeller okay. from Asher right. uh, down to Route 9 is okay. So I make a motion to um, put those out the bid. I second. Discussion? How we where is the money coming? The money, from? we have some money in chips. Chips money? Okay. 
Yes. Well, but that's why we don't know if we can do the whole job. We have right. to see how much. We definitely want to do Asher that's Road. That's why you split up the bid. Yeah, yeah. Yes. We definitely want to do Asher Road. We believe we have enough money for Asher Road. And since the if the if a crew is going to be there, they might give us a, a good price on doing the whole thing. Now, when you say you have the money for the, uh, from from chips, does this include this year's money, or is it for yeah. past money? Well, we get what about forty thousand dollars right. a year or something like that, right? Right. Pat, do you have the figure of? Uh, <laughs> no, but I have the bid package. I understand okay. we have about sixty thousand dollars in the chips fund right now. So oh, that's the last. I think we. Yeah. yeah. That should do it. So it may it yeah. may be close. The estimate is it would be close. Projection, not the estimate. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Chips money, by the way, is, is uh, highway money given to us by the state every year. And we have to use it or else we're going to lose it. Um, on Astor Drive and Somers and Mill Street, potholes have been repaired. Um, the guys are milling around the basins and um, in some intersections to help drain the water. Blacktop will follow. Uh, we, we purchased a used dump truck last month and Mike reports that it's worked out well for pulling trailers and making small mulch deliveries. Um, we can also use it for the tree commission when we do our plantings. We can put the mulch in back of there, but um, I'd like to also thank Lou Ruge. He always gave us his, his truck to use. We'll probably still use his also. Um, we need to rent a vacuum truck to clean the basin lines for the drainage as Mike tried to clean out a, uh, a line on Manor Road with a power snake that he rented, but it didn't work. And we, we rented this truck a few years ago, so we want to get it back and, and clean some of the lines that we need to clean. And I asked Mike to make a list of the areas where he knows that have to be cleaned. Um, the brush piles, Mike's asking that the brush piles do not be placed near the catch basins, as when it rains, the brush gets thrown into the drainage systems, and that's why we have to clean the systems all the time. So please keep the brush piles away from the uh, storm drains. They're working on tree trimming. Yeah, can, 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I do a lot of walking to the, to the village, and, and I sympathize with what you're saying, and I don't understand why so many people put their tr leaves and their brush and so on right sometimes on top of the, the drains. And I'm just wondering if we should send, with our water bills, uh, just a reminder on there how, how detrimental that can be. Yeah, we like, can do that. Clog, clogging up our our uh, drainage system, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and causing flooding mm -hmm. in, in the streets. It's been going on for years. Now, you know, you have battled that. Right. Mike right. Wolf has battled that either. for a long time. If we're going to do a letter like that, we should mention again that grass clippings are not supposed yeah, to. Right, that's a lot of people thing. are doing that. And the other thing too is I think that we probably should get it to more of a schedule for pickup. I think you know being able to place your brush on the street anytime. Yeah. Um, you know you can see that the village goes through. Yeah. Highway Five department goes later, through. It's back out again. Picks up right. whole streets worth, and then all of a sudden, uh, one day later, it's a new pile sits there, and it's there for another. We, we've been battling this ever since I've been on the board. And well, uh, yeah. Were you we setting me up for the gravel truck reference? I'm not setting you up for the gravel truck. Because that <laughs> usually comes right about now. The only no, thing, but, but I think there's lots of other municipalities that don't just have pickup. For they, don't, they don't pick up brush. We're the only village around that I know that picks up brush. They do it in, in the spring and in the fall, and that's it. We do it all year round, which is a bone of contention with me. But it's a good service we have. But... The it takes them always away from has other, other Yeah, but it always has piles area. of brush in the streets. It doesn't look good. Right. And while, while we're on that, and I know it's not in Mike's report, but he did tell me uh, yesterday that they spent five days, the entire crew, five days to remove the, uh, the storm de debris. And that would have been greatly reduced with the... With the grapple <laughs> apparatus. Yes. Heath is pushing for a, a grapple truck. It has a grapple on it, one person can operate it and puts it right in the back, there's a dump in the back of it and dumps it right back there. It's one man operation. We're working on that, Heath. Yes. Um, they're working on tree trimming around the sidewalks and, and the sides of the road intersections. Um, on, as Heath just said, on July 3rd, a big storm rolled through in the late afternoon and um, heavy rain came down and closed some of the roads. We were, Heinz and I and Heath were here in the fire department 
that night with all the action going on. There was the a lot going on. I like left. The next day you left. The next day I left on a pre-planned uh, vacation. Right. Yes. <laughs> but I'd like to thank the fire department for that night. They were out there all night long and working hard. Um, Mill Street took the worst of that storm. Uh, there was three or four trees that were that were on, blown down and wires were down and everything. So Mike says that they had ten loads of brush was removed just from Mill Street alone. Yeah. Um, after that, the catch basins were cleaned and the ditches were cleared, and uh, that's about it for Mike's report. Except he's saying something about some new digital radios that he had. He doesn't think that they're um, working, working too well. So we can look into that. We've been working with NICOMCO. Yeah. Continually. How are oh, you? I. I'm sorry. I have a bid here for a plow for this truck that we, um, this used truck that we purchased. But I wanted to ask Mike a few questions because I noticed one has a warranty on, two year warranty. The other ones don't say anything about warranties. Um, I don't know if you guys noticed this. Didn't notice. One has a rubber deflector, one another one doesn't. So I wanted to make sure we're going apples with apples and there's no really rush. We can discuss this at our next meeting. Mike was off today, so I couldn't talk to him about it. Okay. And, and you guys gonna go after this, this tree in the landsman kill, right? Yeah, I spoke to Rich about that. There's a tree that fell in a landsman's kill. And um, I, I was just wondering about the legality of who's responsible and apparently the homeowner's responsible even because the tree was on their property and it fell into the middle of the, of the stream. It's down here behind. Blocking the whole stream. Yeah, and, and now's a good time to get it out because we have the working on a dam, which we'll talk about later. Um, and the, the stream is low because we had to drain the lake partially. So it's a good time to remove that tree. So we'll talk to the homeowner, the landowner. Thank you. Thanks, Howie. Thank you. Anything else? Well, I just wanted to welcome back. Oh, thank yeah, you. To piggyback on your comments in regards to the storm, it was a pretty intense storm that came through. I just wanted to thank the response, like you did, of the fire department, our police department, certainly our highway department, who was here on the third, and then again on the fourth of July to clean up the debris that was uh, uh, cleared out by Central Hudson. And that also to thank Central Hudson because they did a great job of getting everyone back up and running uh, pretty quickly. On to planning, yes, Scott. No, I'm just going to comment that I don't have a planning and zoning report for the month of June. Okay. Do you unless, uh, unless Gary has it. Well, with zoning, um, we wanted to nominate two uh, new members to be alternate. Uh, Do you want to back up just a second? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. So um, <laughs> we did have, since we were here in this room last, we did have uh, a couple of smaller meetings. Um, which usually don't get a big turnout. So I just want to bring everybody up to speed that we did accept the resignation of Francois Weigel, who was our, the chairman of the Zoning Board of Appeals, um, and thank him greatly for his 40 years uh, that he served on the board, 37 of which he was the chair. Um, so we will be hearing more about that later. But in the, in the interim, we have um, appointed Al Ducre as the interim chair of the Zoning Board of appeals uh, while we get everything else uh, hammered out there. So they're, they're, they're up and up and running still, but did not want to uh, miss the opportunity to thank Francois for his many, many years of service. Right. And with that, uh, we had um, two openings. Uh, one alternate, I guess, had left. Another alternate became a, a permanent member of the zoning board. Um, so I wanted to nominate uh, Brant Nunecker and Judy Merritt uh, to be alternates to the zoning board. I'll second that. Any discussion on that? Good. I just want to say that we're fortunate, you know, to have, you know, obviously, uh, Brant Nunecker served on this board and zoning issues have been uh, very important to him. He's been working with us. Um, Ever, even since he left the board and uh, Judy has been on the tree, tree commission and she's sworn she's going to stay on the tree commission um, but will, is also willing to serve as an alternate to the board. So we're two very qualified people. We have a couple of people on the zoning board who do travel a little bit so the alternates will be playing an active role there. 
I think that uh, uh, Brian Neuniger will make an excellent choice for that. I think Judy would make an excellent choice, as long as, well, as, long as she stays I, on the tree I, commission. I, I don't know, Judy. <laughs> okay. okay, thanks, Gary. So the uh, police and court. We got to vote. Oh. oh. Yeah. We can't move along? <laughs> All, All, those those All that discussion had me distracted. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Welcome, Judy. Um, police, are, we're working on a, a contract to police. Our next meeting is August 5th, okay. 6 p.m. Um, for, for June, they issued 69 tickets. There were 107 uh, calls or incidents they responded to, and there were six arrests. That's all, all we have for that. Moving along to special requests, we do have um, a completed uh, event application for Sinterklaas, but it has not um, passed through all the channels of, you know, fire department, police department yet, so it'll probably be coming when, our when way. Do they, when do they need, uh, What's that? I can't think about Christmas yet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas in July. The dates, is that what yeah, you what, 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 when do they need uh, uh, an affirmative uh, response? Well, we just got it, right, Pat? Yeah. I just saw, heard of it today. So there's no action there, but the next one is the uh, Rhinebeck Garden Club had requested to place a plaque in the uh, Doughboy Park over here, just showing that they um, take care of that area. Are you going to say something about that, Brenda? Trying to. Uh, I'll make sure you answer my questions. I think you okay. have the letters and yeah. a mock-up of the yeah. sign. Everyone, do you have a mock-up? I haven't seen a mock-up. How big is it, Brenda? Um, is it this size? Bigger than a bread box? Yes. It's, it's oh, beautiful. That's the mark. Four by six inches. Um, oh, that's... that's oh, so. is appropriate depending on the location. It could be yeah. inches. So, so it's but much... one of the ground, and it's silver. It's aluminum, but the So it just goes flush with the, with the ground? Yeah. yeah. Nice. It goes on a post in the ground, or it sits on the ground? Yeah. On a little paver or something. Yeah. Okay. And you saw the right one. Yep. What, what color is it? Because everything I think in in Doughboy is brass, right? Brass or bronze yeah. kind of has a Greenish. that kind of color. Greenish. Patina. Patina. Should be. Yeah. Brass or bronze, right? Yeah. With a patina. Um, and what color is yours? We just, uh, I just these think. These were, again, this is what we get the price for. Uh, engraved on black with silver color edge, and the, gra the engraving is also silver color. Aluminum guaranteed not to rust. It blends well with gold. It's, it's the dough boy. Well, Park. not gold, but cotton, grass. We're very, very particular when it comes to that little part. So, so how much more would it be for a... Uh, Okay. So, unless of course the rest of the board thinks that I'm crazy, they could no. It should blend in with the rest of the plaques. That's a separate question, really. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about that later. Would you agree with that? I mean, yeah, that, yeah, that would look nice. Uh, I don't know what the cost would be now. I get that price, and do we need now to come back another month? It would be to get. Uh, if, if we find out it's too much money, and we decide not to go with the we'll rest. Back here on the twelfth. We're meeting in a yeah. couple more weeks. Two weeks. This is a late meeting for this month, yeah. So August meeting second Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah. So you want to check and see now what is well, the request? Here's what I would say is that if you can get that thing, that sign in brass, I would my opinion is that you would be good to go ahead. And if you find that uh, not you'll make up the difference. I'll make up the difference. I, I think she said it's, it's smaller than that. You said four, yeah, it's four, four by, by six. six. And this is eight and a half by eleven. Oh. It's, it, it will be four by inches by six inches. Yeah, so it's not okay. small. Yeah. yeah. I don't have a problem with that. And, but is, and the height can be whatever is appropriate. Right. It's, it's here now. It's okay. Okay, so it's, there's probably not that much of a big price difference anyway. Yeah. So that Did, is exactly what you're going to. That was just my opinion. I don't know if the rest of the board agrees. 
do you um, want to make a motion that if it's we can approve it with brass, then they wouldn't have to come back if it's gonna if they can make that work. Does that it's sound? Not brass. Does that work? Is exactly. that good for you? That's, that brass. sounds like a viable option to me. I would agree with that. Okay. I'll make a motion to accept your submission in brass. Second. Any more discussion? If you come back, if you decide that it's not cost effective, that you'll come back before this board with an alternative material. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you, Brenda. Um, we have. Thank, wait, let me thank Brenda and the Garden Club for maintaining the yes. Go Boy Park thank over there. You yes. did a wonderful job. It's great. Thank you. Yes. Can we just be clear? Not only will this give us the credit, but it will also be Membership, which we will by mm -hmm. anyway. Yeah. So people are aware that there is a garden club in Wine Bay and that we can see the sectors. Mm -hmm. right. The next one we have a request to drill uh, wells. Yeah, I looked subdivision the, uh, in Wine Coop Lane. I, I, um, looked, I, looked, at, I looked at that. Uh, at first, I didn't know what the parameters were, but once I got the, the drawings and, and the location of the uh, the, of the parcels, I, I, I think it is reasonable for him to drill wells. Assume, and I think they were already approved by the uh, Department Board of Health, the, the County Board of Health. Uh, I think it's about 1,600 feet. He would have to lay a water line from number 15, White Wine Coop Lane, all the way to his place, which is a long distance. It's quite expensive to do that. So I, I have no. No so that property is in, in the village? It's in the village, yeah. Because that's the dividing yeah. line, right? Yeah, it's, it's right. Well, it's actually, as you go a, a, a wine coop lane, it's on the left hand side, close yeah. to the fairgrounds. Yeah. yeah. It's not a, the right side is, is, is the town, town the right. left side is, is the village. There's no water or sewer service out there? 1,600 feet from the, uh, from water, the next water, water hookup. Yeah, there's no sewer, sewer service. No, no. It's the only requirement. Yeah. Okay. So they needed a, um, apparently the, according to the developer, they, the Department of Health needed a statement from the village okaying it. So, yeah. so I'll make the motion to, to okay the, the wells for that. Vote. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Other business? Um, Asher Dam. Let's see here, we started our um, repairs on that last week, which was to include um, some small repairs on the face of the dam, um, some replacement of the riprap, and when some of the riprap was removed, we realized that the, the problem was significantly larger. It went from um, about 40 square feet of stone that needed to be repaired to 540 square feet of stone that need to be repaired. So that's why you'll notice that the lake is much lower than it than typically has been lowered to allow them to work in there. They've started um, the excavation and, and the repair. It, it's kind of going, going along well. We've had some good news. Recently, um, we've had the DEC involved, um, New York State Emergency Service, as well as FEMA and we're continuing to work with them in terms of funding and, and approval. But uh, where we're at today is we have the initial uh, portion repaired, regrouted on the face of the dam. I should add that there was some concern that that stone was, uh, was basically all there was holding the dam up, but there is uh, a great deal of concrete behind that upstream on the lakeside. Uh, but it's still been recommended by you know, the village engineer as well as the project, the engineer working on this project that it get repaired um, as soon as possible. So we have a change order. Uh, you know, we're able to negotiate a better price than we had originally talked about. Um, I spoke with the contractor today and uh, the amount is $45,000 to continue to finish the rest of it. And that's on top of the original $40,000. Right. The, the whole bid, uh, the whole project was fifty-nine thousand and change for the dam and, and the pedestrian bridge, yeah. which was about forty twenty forty thousand for the dam. So this would be an additional forty-five thousand dollars to 
to repair the face. And um, the situation now is that they're there, the dam is lowered. It's an opportune time to to make the, make the repair. So Heath, the initial uh, proposal we saw for the change order was $74,000. Correct. Was that, that, was that is, the number we were able to negotiate from, or that was that number inclusive of no, the No, that, that's the number where we, we had come down to to 45,000 from um, from the 74, I did confirm with the village engineer that even the it's well within um, the acceptable price range for that for that work. So, so we don't have to rebid anything. Everyone's all this is okay no, to I do. Mean, this, as long as it doesn't change the essentials of the contract. I mean, what you did is you un unearthed some work and you found out there's a lot more. And was originally not bid. More of the same. Right. Yeah. You don't need to rebid. Which was not visible to anyone, including the uh, the engineers. It was obscured by a the water coming over, and uh, and b all the stone, the riprap that was laying against the face of it. So, um, I wasn't. I didn't see the original um, details for the repair, but there are some elements of this additional repair which seem to be slightly different than maybe what was in the original repair. Because it, from what I understood, the left side and the right side of the dam were going to be repointed. The new area that's been exposed has some voids. Correct. And, and so what now will they replace those voids with? With the local Concrete? stones. With the stone on, on site. It'll be, stone will be packed in and it will be Using on-site materials? Yeah. Yes. And so were those, were those details shown as a part of the original bid package or was there always stone replacement as a part of even the, I don't the first? Was, I don't think it was on there. It, it was outlined in the original one that said that they would use what was there in it and then they would use additional stone. Okay. I don't know how it was worded, but if necessary, in the same, um, the same language, well, similar language, it says repair downslope stone masonry of dam, parapet phase with new or reset grounded stone masonry. but. It appears to my novice eye that there is enough stone. That all the stone that was washed out or fell out was laying in the laying in the spillway. So what I'm getting at is this: is that if when you're repointing stone, you're tucking new mortar in between all the existing yep. joints, and the stone's already anchored. It may have masonry ties or something tying it back into the, the existing dam. So if we're gonna, we have some pretty good sized voids now in the face of that dam. Is there an anchoring detail that anchors the new stones that we're going to be placing in those voids to the dam that's behind or the structure that's behind? That's what I'm getting at. Is he just going to put stone in there and just tuck point it, or is it now actually going to be mechanically anchored? Uh, You're talking with some kind of rebar or something? Rebar, masonry ties. I'm just, yeah. the, I'm just wondering if we should ask for those details. If mm -hmm. we should ask our engineer if any other details are required for those repairs that we're actually approving. So in, in some places here, the, the, where, it need, where it needs to be repointed is right on top of some rich, huge boulders. Mm -hmm. So you would just set them on there, you know. I, yeah, he's I trying think I understand what's the question. It, yeah. We have had, uh, since uh, yesterday morning, we have had an engineer on site observing all the work that's, that's been happening. That was a recommendation from DEC mm -hmm. on Was it the design Friday. engineer? Uh, no, it was the village engineer okay. or representative from, and now the design engineer is uh, is back. Um, he was away, and he's back, and they have you know coordinated together, um, the two engineers and, and the contractor, and we like I say continuing to work with the the DEC. We've also had an engineer from the state uh, emergency services has been out there, um, and basically they're all in agreement in support of. Of, of the work that's being done and to continue with it. But uh, I think I know what Scott's saying. He's saying, is, is this going to be secured to the more sturdier structure that's in back of this? The bricks on the, uh, the, on the face of this dam is just superficial. It's just, it's for looks. It's just basically. the wearing. It's, yeah. it, it really just, it prevents erosion of the concrete. So yeah. the water comes over the dam, those stones break the, the flow of the water from hitting the concrete and wearing down the concrete. Well, they get water in there and freeze and then break. Right. What I'm just saying is a lot of times when you build masonry walls and it has two 
widths, one being the concrete and the other one being brick or stone, it's anchored, they're anchored together. And so what I, I just was wondering is if that detail exists. I it is not sure that the price that we are given yeah. is for the work that needs to be done, not just an assumption that what was specified for the left and the right side, which was just tuck pointing. Now, now we're talking about a space that is three feet deep that needs to be filled. Yeah. You know, after three feet, approximately three feet, there's the concrete wall for another three feet. So, so, so uh, you you would have to get into the concrete wall all the way down to, to anchor any kind of things, and that's not going to happen because you have to rip everything out. So what I what I think they're going to do is they, uh, they they built a stone wall, you know, support it, shim it up, put. Uh, uh, cement in there, build another layer, and then put cement in there. But going in three, almost three feet of it, in particular in some areas where the hole is, is huge. But I don't think there's any way to put in any kind of a steel reinforcement that anchors against the dam, if that is the question that you have. It's typically it's just a strap. Yeah, it's strap, yeah. Strap. But that's the, you cannot get at the wall, that's the okay. point. You know, it's so far, it's so deep. Yeah, the wall is not it, it's exposed. Not, it's, it's not exposed, exposed. it's not uh, available. You know, to, it doesn't to do appear that. that any of that kind of... Um, was ever done. No, it doesn't appear that it was in there before. So That's why the stones fell out. <laughs> right? <laughs> yes, <laughs> so it's, I mean, well, it's not a safety <laughs> issue, it's, it's, it's an issue of yeah. how long is this going to last. Is it, you know, it's going to last obviously 30, 40 years. Well, the, 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 the dam was a, built in 1960. The concrete, and the, the, portion, the concrete portion of it was built. The other yeah. one is 150 years old or whatever. So, I mean, the engineers have all right. signed off on the plan. So, okay. I would like to make a motion to accept the uh, change order at $45,000. Second. More discussion. Good, Gary. <laughs> I know nothing. <laughs> No, I think okay. we discussed it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And we don't have, FEMA has not given us any money yet, right? Or do we have FEMA money already? or? Well, FEMA awarded us in, I believe, Irene, yeah. 2011, 2011 right. Um, I, they had awarded us somewhere in the neighborhood of 100 and 50,000, I don't have the numbers in front of me. Okay. We spent about 80 of that on uh, the, the divers and the installation of the valves. Right. Um, so that would, in theory, leave 70. And, and we have we, the money in hand. That 70 is, has already been spent and, and reimbursed. We do not have, or the 80. 80 we do not have the 70, 70 in the account. They, okay. the, the way that that uh, grant worked is that you you pay for it and then they reimburse you. So the, the the worksheet stayed open, and we were there had been some confusion uh, because it, the FEMA funds are, are administered through the New York State Emergency Services, and FEMA said uh, something to the effect of, "Well, give us our money back. You didn't do all the work." But New York State had said, "Given us the extension until 2015 to complete it." So we have an appeal open for that. Um, this would, of course, push us over um, even the original number by by some. And we um, have you, we and have asked. We yes, have asked. we have uh, have the engineer from uh, New York State Emergency Service. He, he has been out here. He has written a letter on our behalf to, uh, I guess, to his own department. Uh, today, I requested that uh, FEMA send a representative out and inspect it because. As I understand, that's a, another step to access emergency funding related to what we discovered. At you know, we, we uncovered a bigger problem than we thought, and we don't really have an option other than to fix it. Good on that. Uh, the employee health insurance plan. We need to. Yeah. I know we forget a lot, but I think we got that one. <laughs> Um, employee health insurance, there's no major updates. We're still trying to tweak out a, uh, 
an acceptable proposal, but it does run out on the 31st. Pat, you want to give your time clock? Uh... Yes, but can I just interrupt? This lady, Mrs. Christensen, she wanted to address the board oh. regarding her tree. Oh. Yeah. yeah, it was on my list. I didn't know you were here. <laughs> okay. So you, 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 has, you just building this house there, right? Yes, on 37 South Street, just uh, east of Mulberry. Beautiful, beautiful place. Been in there Thank you. last week. Thank you. Next to your yeah. brother. Right, right next to the Okay, so. Oh, it's a stand. Sure, yeah, I've, I've seen it. Just I've so seen you, it. you have I've seen, seen it. it. Okay, do you have copies of these? I think I have them. Sorry, they're not better ones. That's okay. We're in the middle of moving. We're moving next week. Oh, good. We'll be here. So, uh, my husband Jim is going to be here. So, my husband Jeff and myself uh, are doing obviously a lot of site work on the property and we had um, uh, Meg Crawford come to advise us on some landscaping and some advice on we're having the driveway, um, the crushed stone put down and shaped and all that. And we have to remove the apron that's there. There's a hazard where at, at the edge of our property where it meets the church's property where the the sidewalk comes up about three feet, not three feet, about a foot uh, <clears throat> or so, maybe eight inches. And so we were asking her advice and she looked up and said, well, that elm tree is crowding the black maple. It's pushing the roots up, which is why the sidewalk's so high. We're trying to level the sidewalk. We'd like to keep the bluestone as much as possible. It ends up a very expensive <laughs> endeavor to do. So we're asking that we can um, remove the elm tree that's there and grind the roots down and level the street, <laughs> sidewalk, not the street, um, so that when we do this work, we're doing it once and not having an interim solution to try and deal with the hazard and still have it raised uh, above where it should be to, to create a level walkway. So we're not doing it we're only going to do it once. Let me put it that way. I've, and I've, been, I've been there today and looked at it, and then the, the, the two uh, trees, each one probably 18 inches in diameter, being within two feet of each other. Yeah, it's on the yeah, right yeah, picture right. there. Yeah. And, uh, and on top of it, I think one of them hangs over the electric wires. In right. Really the the branch, one part of the work we're going to have yeah. done is having that branch cut so that it doesn't rest on the wire. The uh, tree person feels that, and, and Meg also, feels that if we cut the end of it off, it will lift off the wire. It's just a very heavy limb. That's from the black walnut yeah. uh, that's there. But you can tell all the, the branches are all intertwined. They're really way too close to each other. Uh, but it is the elm that's pushing the sidewalk up. So her recommendation was to come and ask if we could have it removed. So uh, uh, Has it gone to the tree commission yet? No, we just got that today, right? No. But is it, well, the first question is, on whose property is it? It looks like it is on your property, right? It looks like it is. Yes. Well, that, it's an interesting question. I think it's on ours and the church's because our, our line goes right through the middle of that line of trees along my driveway. But I've talked to Father Peter, and he is fine with it, and we'll pay for the sidewalk. We'd have to remove two sections of the sidewalk that the roots are under, grind the roots down, and then replace that sidewalk, and then we're going to do a driveway apron and a concrete sidewalk to the blue stone on the other side of the driveway. No, it's our driveway. And, and there, you propose you know. to pay for the removal of the tree? Yes. Okay. And I already have the estimate, and I, already, I submitted the application already yeah. uh, to do that. It had been submitted to the, as soon as I got it, it got sent to the tree commission. Oh, right. today you mean? No, no, no. Oh. No, on July 3rd. July 2nd. Oh. Or July 2nd. Oh. July 2nd. Oh. They may not have met since then, correct? They have not met. Okay. You know, what I, I might want to request, just because we're doing this work now, and I'd rather plan and get it done, as and, I said. And um, Meg Crawford has suggested that, right? To yes, she did. Different. Well, I make a motion to allow him to remove the tree. It's a, yeah, I second that. I mean, if you have to, this is what we were talking about before. If you have to yeah. fix the sidewalk, you have to yeah. cut the roots, and then the tree's probably going to die anyway. Yeah. And, and it's going to make the other tree live longer, better, healthier life. Right. 
And Meg has recommended which of the two trees? Uh, the elm tree. Is the one, the one take the Yes, and, and she said it would make the black walnut healthier and, right. and we'll take just the limb of the black walnut that's on the, um, the line. You're going to hate the black walnut, just so you know. Well, it's I know, it's you can't there. grow anything else around oh. it. Everything yeah. I've suggested, you can't have that near a black walnut. But but <laughs> black <laughs> stains. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So, anyway. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. <laughs> you should have said something while we were talking about the trees yeah. before. Didn't we you? always let the uh, head on our guests go first. You get to keep it oh, I didn't realize. Okay. I mean, Thank we you. know you're here. We thought you were just interested in other topics. Okay. I used to be on a board of bed. We didn't do that. <laughs> Unless we, we, well, under certain circumstances, we did. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you're welcome. You. You're welcome. Thank you. Pat, you want to give us a uh, time clock uh, update? Yes. What are you looking for? Mrs. Christensen's paper. Oh, I had, oh it's okay. over here. Okay. Uh, send, send this down I had contacted six different time clock companies, and I had received quotes from them. I had sent, scanned them and sent them all to the board so that you should have them. Mm -hmm. The prices range from... $1,217.85 to $13,660.91. These would be placed at the water plant, wastewater plant, and the street department with having the capability of me being able to go in to get the, the time clock information. They would be biometrics varying from face recognition to hand, rec hand punches. Um, I have referred it and I have spoken to our IT, uh, Jim Jeffries, and he had recommended us staying with the same time management system that we currently have here in the Village Hall, which is a, a mono. We have a finger punch, a, fin a finger scanner. Talking to a mono, they, this, this has been a big process, just so you know. <laughs> a mono, it has a hand, hand recognition but they're working on a facial recognition, which they hope to have come out very soon because of having the contaminants that are available in a water, wastewater, street department with dirt and things. Um, they don't have a price or anything on that now. But currently the Amano would be in the middle, 3535 And that's- Is that per? That is, no, for all three. Yeah, that was for all three. And we would have to be networked and talking to Jim Jeffries. We would have to have, and this is above me because I don't understand networking, but you would have, we'd have to go through Time Warner and we have a different IP address and that IP address, we can have five different things on it so that we can connect to it. And that would be about $40 a month extra for us to have that. But once we have that, then I can get the information from the different departments. So that's where. So your recommendation based on your research is the Amano? Would be the Amano based upon um, relying on what Jim had said, staying okay. with the same software type okay. of company Do you like, that we, we like the software we have? Yes. Okay. Yeah, it seems okay. So is it, is it I, thumb or hand? Or it's hand. It's the whole hand. hand? Yeah. I like the concept of Face only because I'm anticipating the problems that can happen having them at a, a dusty, dirty environment. Because that was that was speaking to Amano, that was one of their concerns. Um, but they've all the town of Rhinebeck has a hand punch down at theirs, and that's a street that's a street department. What did you not like about the first one that is a face reader? Because it is through the cloud and to the cloud, and you have to pay a monthly fee. Oh, okay. But don't you have to pay the monthly fee for the IP address as well? Yes, but that is, that's different. This is, it, it just was more expensive. It was like $200 a month. $200 a month? It, it, it was, that's just off the top of my head. Oh, I know sorry. it was a lot more expensive because of paying. You all have all the information. Like okay. I said, I did. Well, why don't we take... Uh, but if uh, at least until the 12th for all yeah. of us to take a look at this now we have Yeah, it. I just got a mail yeah. an hour ago, so an hour before. Okay. Um, yeah. In terms of the, uh, the front door here to the village hall, um, 
I had asked John to get estimates on what it would take to put a, uh, a handicap button there, you know, an automatic uh, door opener. Mm -hmm. So he requested three estimates and he got two. We have two. 43.14 and 45.95. Now, is that using the existing doors and it just is an operator? It just puts the unit up top. Yes. Right. Gives it's, you the blue buttons, two blue it's, buttons. It's just installing the low energy automatic door openers with two overhead safety sensors, two hinges for exterior door that are worn, and wireless press wall switches and bollard post. So, how does a person with a handicap in a wheelchair get, get to it? Yeah, it's it's a post that has a push button that you push. Oh, the post that sticks out. Yeah, the post would be. There's a code as to how far. Right. You know, it would ADA. be almost at the, at the beginning. So the beginning of the operators? end of our railing. Is that for two operators? Yeah, because we have two doors with the breezeway. Yeah, right. it's for two operators. For two operators. Yeah. yeah. And where the but only one side. Right. That's right. It is from New England Door Closure Incorporated. That was the forty-three fourteen, and Door Control Incorporated proposal for forty-five ninety-five. And they this, are from Wallingford, Connecticut. You think at this point we should probably look into replacing those doors too? I didn't get a price. We didn't get a price. Yeah. I'm just well, saying those are. we have those, those little... estimates. Why don't we look at the at the bigger picture? You want to take a look and we'll. I thought, I thought we had we did work on those a couple of years ago. We, we did. We had Mount we'd Carney. Have to, we'd have to dig it out, but I remember it was. Oh, you had a. Yeah, it wasn't too long ago. We had we we re, I don't know if we replaced them or we had them refurbished or what. We had them refurbished. So we can expand that discussion. Let's take a look and we have those two quotes and see if it's something we want to. Because the other thing we have to do too is you know, now that you're making a handicap accessible with an operator, you got to make sure that it's wide enough. Yeah. So because it doesn't make any sense to make it accessible door operational door. when it's yeah. not clear. So we have to check this. Maybe we can get with Nancy Clark or something. She can give us an idea. I think it has to be 36 inches clear. So that means when the door is open, from the it has to be clear from the jam to the side of the door. The so. building inspector should be able to help you. Oh, you're right. Thank you very much. We have one of those. Look at that. Okay, we already did the energy report yes, for PCS. Yeah. Yeah. I always you're like right. that we have that bonus we can move along. Did you guys get a look at this escrow? Uh? Yeah, I was a little confused. Um, okay. Don't we already have people doing this stuff? Like our accountant. And, uh, no, I think this. Well, I, I was hoping that Chrissy would come and talk to us about it, but I think what she wants is a. What do we do? Just a, a structure, a virtual structure, where she has a virtual accounts it's that a, she can move her money around and easily. It's, it's like one account with some accounts. Sub -accounts it's all yeah. shown on one picture yeah. instead mm -hmm. of having you know, ten different. So accounts. she can go on the, online and then move money from one account to, to, to the sub accounts. So. So I don't, I don't know yeah. what that was. What's that? I, I don't have a problem with that. We'll address that with, with Chrissy. Yeah. Well, that's exactly what you said, though. Yeah. What's that? It is. It's one account, and underneath that one account, there's yeah, sub accounts. accounts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the maintenance bond for Rhinebeck Commons. That's the. Um, Project uh, by Village Green, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Locust and they, Grove. Yes, and they had some work that needed to be completed, and we held back money in the form of bonds. It was a one year maintenance bond after being accepted for the dedication of the roads last year. Right, and it's been, all the work's been completed. Nancy Clark has recommended that we sign off on it. So I will make the motion to do so. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody got anything else? Minute approval. Um, well, I know we have the water and sewer adjustments. Mm -hmm. oh. you can Go ahead. Water and sewer adjustments. Uh, okay, we had uh, in the month of June we had 11 finals and uh, 10 new owners. Uh, I think this is mostly the gardens, right, uh, Pat? Correct. Um, we had a, uh, a debit memo, uh, a debit memo of 
uh, where we actually don't charge the highway department, the town highway department, and any money for, for their water usage or for their connection of the usage. Uh, we had another uh, um, uh, debit memo of uh, $54 uh, from, for a person uh, on an account that we have an agreement for the last 100 years or so uh, that uh, you don't have to pay because the, the village had their well at that point. We have uh, an account number seven. It's a, oh no, account number 11089, uh, a, uh, a, a debit memo of uh, $891. And that was because we, uh, that's the, the, town, the town swimming pool, which did not have used any water and was built in error. So they have not used any water and they, they get, you know, a standard fee for the, for the, for the, uh, for the use of How did they not use water. any water? Well, because they, they were not open yet. Oh, it was just okay. a, it was an error in billing, an error in billing. Uh, account number s seven, we had, uh, a software issue where we uh, changed meters out and then it didn't get uh, recorded correctly. So we had three entries of that uh, to uh, to adjust for them. Uh, one of them for four hundred ninety-eight dollars. Um, one of them for three hundred and eight as a credit, and then another two hundred and forty-nine dollars as a debit. Uh, we had uh, two accounts where the uh, the numbers were interchanged, so they were the, 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 was, the payments were applied to the wrong account. And, you know, and the last one, uh, we had uh, four, four accounts where uh, people complained they didn't get a bill. It turns out that uh, when checking it with the, with the postmaster, that they apparently they had a new person delivering bill and uh, 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 mail, I should say, and uh, it was not, for some reason, people said they didn't get any, any bill. So what, I, what we did, uh, we, we just waived the uh, collection fee, but uh, still, uh, they still had to pay the penalty that they had. And uh, we, we looked, actually tried to get electronic payments and so on, but this is uh, not, not feasible at this time. So we just have to limp along with that and hope that the post service delivers in time. The reason we thought it was a problem, normally there's always somebody who says it didn't get a bill, okay, but they were all in the same area oh. and in the southern part, so, so we, we thought uh, that was an issue there, and that's all I have. This is, do you want this one? Yeah. And that's all I have. The next one would be sewer adjustments, right? I don't, uh, let me see. I'm sorry, I didn't see this before. So, there was. Usually, the sewer adjustments are in line with the water adjustments. Right. It's just All three right. times more and fewer accounts. Mm -hmm. Right, Pat? Right, right. You have them there? I do. Uh, okay. I do. Do you want me to read them? We have. Seven new, seven finals, and they are all, except for one, in, except for two in the gardens. We have one, two, three, four, five, seven new owners, again, all except for two in the gardens. We have a removal of a penalty, and I don't remember the issue, I'm sorry. Meter change out, and it was an adjustment due to, it was a computer glitch, it wasn't a, it wasn't a, that it was entered wrong. The computer software had a glitch in it that has been since corrected in the meter changeout process. So that's been corrected. There was a, another final and a removal of a penalty and it was the $25 collection fee. That, again, it was because of the mail. And that was all. So I'd like to make a motion to accept the adjustments as submitted. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 The minutes?
Uh, I checked the minutes, Pat, and uh, I, ha I could account for all the minutes except for the last one, the 171. They haven't been approved. They weren't in... Well, I didn't have them even to look at them. That's what I'm saying. I've seen from, from March 3rd through uh, June 25th, I had the minutes written up. I had them actually in my hands. Right, but they haven't come to the board for a bit. Oh, I know that, but, but I'm, I, my question has to do with the 171, which was not even written up yet. So we cannot, we, we probably couldn't even vote on this one. Yes. So we, yeah, well, we can hold that one until next time next and do it with yeah. this one. Right. You want so all except 7 1. Okay. Yeah. I thought you were saying that you, you didn't get that all of them. No, 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 no. I got, okay. I got all of them except okay. this one. Yeah. I, 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 I'm going to make a motion to accept. Is that the motion? Yes. A second. Okay. And I have a discussion on this, yes. sir. Uh, if you look here, we have from from March third to now. That's a long, long time. Right. I think we should try to really the get the minutes approved. On a, timely, on a timely fashion, mm -hmm. every month. Okay. I thought well, we, I said to Pat, I thought we had previously approved a whole bunch of these, but she said no. You know, that's we certainly have, can. because I wasn't yeah. here in March. And I know that we've approved them since then. Yeah, we've approved minutes in the last mm -hmm. couple of months. Some of these weren't, for, I wasn't the one that took the minutes. They were Chrissy. So that's where the March ones. Oh, these were some of the uh, budget, budget workshops? workshops. Yeah. So. Okay. Okay. But irrespective, I think. Yeah, we should, we should plan, plan to yep. do it a program well, every month. In defense, I think we've done a, a pretty good job of getting the minutes brought forth before the board and to get them. Yeah. Up and no, no, I'm talking about approving them, not not typing. Yeah, it should be on the agenda every month. Every month. With the ones from from the fire. There's no fault involved. We just want to yeah. do it and move it forward. So everyone, all. All in favor? Aye. 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 The vouchers are downstairs. I think they're done, right, Pat? They're ready to go? Yes, they are. Okay. Okay. Anybody got anything else? A motion to adjourn? So moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.